Hello everyone, welcome back to Agri Farming. Today we are back with how to make compost at home with kitchen waste. As people get increasingly eco-conscious and seek to eat organic, here's how you can make compost at home for your organic kitchen garden. Eco-consciousness among people has been on the rise, especially when it comes to making informed choices about the food they consume. This in turn has led to a boom in organic farming and now many city folks have switched to organic kitchen gardening in their lawns or balconies to ensure that their food is free from chemicals such as fertilizers and pesticides. And even those who do not grow food want to keep their house plants healthy. So they are switching to organic fertilizers and composting. If you are also planning to turn a new leaf and try composting, here are a few things you should keep in mind when you are getting started. The first point is, what is compost? Compost is decayed organic matter which includes food waste, dry leaves, twigs, among other things. When they are put together in a composter or a pit, they break down naturally into a nutrient-rich fertilizer. Compost is organic material that can be added to soil to help plants grow. Food scraps and yard waste together currently make up more than 28% of what we throw away and should be composted instead. Making compost keep these materials out of landfills. Here they take up space and release methane, a potent greenhouse gas. So now, let's see the composting basics. All composting require three basic ingredients, browns, greens, and water. Browns includes materials such as dead leaves, branches, and twigs. And green includes materials such as grass clippings, vegetable waste, food scraps, and coffee grounds. And water is important because having a right amount of water, greens, and browns is important for compost development. Your compost pile should have an equal amount of browns to greens. You should also alternate layers of organic materials of different size particles. The brown materials provide carbon for your compost, the green materials provide nitrogen, and the water provides moisture to help break down the organic matter. Now, let's see the benefits of composting kitchen waste. Kitchen waste compost and rich soil, it helps to retain moisture and suppress plant diseases and pests. It also helps in reducing the need for chemical fertilizers for your kitchen garden. It encourages the production of beneficial bacteria and fungi that break down organic matter to create humus, a rich nutrient-filled material. It also helps to reduce methane emissions from landfills and lowers your carbon footprint. Now, let's see some kitchen composting information. Composting kitchen waste can be as simple as burying the food scraps in the dirt or using a three-stage composting bin or tumbler. The end results are nutrient-rich soil, additives that increase porosity and help hold important moisture in the soil. The items that break down the quickest in kitchen composting are leafy greens. It helps to cut down the size of items for compost to no more than an inch cubed. Smaller pieces compost fast. The slower items are meats and dairy products, though most sources do not recommend meat for composting. Compost pile must be at the proper temperature and moisture balance to ensure breakdown of these types of items. You will also need to cover any composting kitchen scraps so animals don't dig them. Composting is a microbial driven process. Like other living creatures, microbes need right environment to survive and thrive. For compost to do well, microbes need nutritious food which they get from suitable moisture, temperature, and aeration. So, the three main requirements for composting is 
aeration, moisture, and temperature. For aeration, oxygen is essential for respiration of aerobic microorganisms. Without sufficient oxygen, the process will become anaerobic and produce undesirable odors. Sometimes, you might get the rotten egg smell of hydrogen sulfide gas too. Therefore, you need to maintain aerobic condition. This is a simple mix and turn as frequently as necessary or at least once daily. The second is moisture. A moisture content of 50 to 60 percent is generally considered optimum for composting. The first point is too little moisture, say less than 30 percent, inhibits bacterial activity. And the second point is too much moisture that is more than 65 percent results in slow decomposition, odor production, and nutrient leaching. So, how to understand the moisture level? Squeeze a handful of well-mixed compost or raw material. If your hand becomes moist but without any drops of moisture forming, the moisture content is optimal. If water trickles down when compost is squeezed, it is too wet. It indicates that you need to add some garden soil or sawdust or shredded peppers or fully dried leaves in order to bring it to the optimum level. If the compost crumbles, it is too dry. It That means you need to sprinkle some water and enhance the moisture level. The third point is temperature. At certain temperatures, certain microorganisms are moist active. Generally, in a range of 50 to 65 degrees Celsius, proper composting takes place. Actively working microbes can raise the pile's temperature by as much as 60 to 65 degrees Celsius. The temperature in your compost determines how much and how often aeration is required. Now, let's see how to compost at home. There are many different ways to make compost pile. We have provided the following general reference. Helpful tools include pitchfork, terracotta pot, square point shovel, and water hoses with spray head. Regular mixing or turning of the compost and some water will help maintain the compost. The first kitchen waste compost you can try at home is backyard composting. For backyard composting, select a dry, shady spot near a water source for your compost pile or bin. Add brown and green materials as they are collected, make sure larger pieces are chopped or shredded. Moisten dry materials as they are added. Once your compost pile is established, mix grass clippings and green waste into the pile and bury fruit and vegetable waste under 10 inch of compost material. One of the optional thing you can do in backyard composting is Cover top of compost with a tarp to keep it moist. When the material at the bottom is dark and rich in color, your compost is ready to use. This usually takes anywhere between 2 months to 2 years. Suppose, if you don't have space, then you can also opt for indoor composting. You can compost materials indoors using a special type of bin which you can buy at local hardware store, gardening supply store, and make yourself. Remember, to tend your pile and keep track of what you throw in, a properly managed compost bin will not attract pests or rodents and will not smell bad. Home composting is as a simple process based on two basic principles that is adequate air and water. Adequate air is required to decrease the odor smell. It's like taking care of a potted plant while understanding the science behind composting. The end results are finer with multiple bins or a rotating tumbler, whereas piles on ground or mixing into garden beds yields more robust and chunkier compost. Kitchen composting can also be accomplished in a warm bin where the little guys eat their way through 
your debris and deposit moist from casting for fertilizer and soil amendment. In the process of kitchen waste composting, there are two requirements, that is greens and browns. Let us try to list out greens and browns so that we can understand the nitrogen requirement and carbon requirement. The green represents nitrogen and brown represents carbon. Some of the nitrogen waste are discarded vegetables or vegetable pills, food waste or food scraps or leftover food, coffee and tea grounds and tea bags, stale bread and eggshells, leftover salad, citrus, cut slurs, prunings or fresh grass clippings, house plants, sewage sludge which have no chemicals, cow manure, poultry manure, rabbit manure, horse manure, and pig manure. You cannot use dog or cat's manure. Now, let's see the brown list. The browns include dry leaves, garden shrubs gathered, corn stalks, sawdust, wood chips, paddy straw, hay, shredded pepper, shredded cardboard, newspaper, twigs, and small pieces of parks, pepper napkins, tissue papers, dry leaves, garden shrubs, and newspaper pieces are easily available. Soil can be added in compost because organic carbon is generally present in garden soil. Now, let's see how to use compost in your kitchen garden. There are various ways to use your finished compost. You can sprinkle compost on top or mix it into your flour and vegetable beds. Gently rake compost into three beds, blend it with potting soil to revitalize indoor plants or spread it on top of the soil on your lawn as a soil amendment. It is advised not to plant directly on your compost. Growing plants in pure compost can cause problems with water retention and stability as well. So, while it may be tempting, planting in pure compost is not a good idea. That's not say you shouldn't plant in compost at all. Just an inch or two of good compost mixed with your existing topsoil in your plants is all your plants need. That's all folks for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe to this channel and please ring the bell button to notify you whenever new video is uploaded. Thank you for watching.